morning everyone. Today we are going to be focusing on functions and obviously we only have two hours so I'm going to be focusing on questions to make sure that you guys can get a pass. Okay we're not going to be focusing on the two difficult things that take too long to explain. I'm going to rely on your teachers to do that with you although I would love to spend time on that. My favorites but um, yeah we need to just focus on what we need um, to be able to get the bulk of the marks. So I just want you to just have a look at your um, notes quickly. Um, I know that people will still be joining the call now, so there's a few announcements we need to make, but we'll make it in a few minutes in terms of registers and things like that. But if you have a look at the notes um, and you go to page, looks like page five, Okay, this is where we're going to start from. I'm not going to really be working from these notes, but these are the questions we're going to be focusing on today. We won't be able to get to all of them. Obviously, there's too much here. And I'm going to be posting a memo to this whole booklet um, at the end of the lesson into the chat. So um, make sure you don't leave without that memo. And then to my learners that are on the call, um, I will send the memo also on WhatsApp so you have access to that. And yeah, okay, so... For grade 12, let me just check that everything's working here before I start. My camera's on, my mic is on, my screen is sharing. It looks good. Okay, for grade 12, the only new work that you guys learned this year were inverse functions. So you have two types of inverse functions. We can either, well, not either. They can either ask you a parabola with an inverse function or an exponential with an inverse function. But that is the only grade 12 work that's, was covered that's new in terms of functions. So the rest of the work is all your grade 11 work, which is great. So if you look at this question, for instance, the first question on page six over there, the first question, I could give this to my grade 11 group and they should be able to answer it. Question two, this whole question, all grade 11 work. So the grade 11 work is actually the most important and it's the most marks in your functions. The inverse functions, very, very few marks, three, four marks here and there. But I do want to spend maybe 15 minutes on inverse functions first, and then we're going to get to the grade 11 work that you do need to know, um, that maybe your basics are lacking. I don't know. We don't know where you guys are at, but um, I'm hoping that I can help today. So like I said, we're going to spend a few minutes. I'm actually going to time myself. We're going to spend about 15 minutes on exponential inverse functions and exponential functions in general. And yeah, if you have any questions, you're obviously welcome to ask in the chat. Um, we have, I can't see the chat at the moment because I'm obviously sharing my screen with you guys, but um, there are people that are on the chat that will be able to stop the lesson and answer questions um, with what, yeah, whatever you need. And if there's any problems in terms of connection, although there shouldn't be today, let's hope. <laughs> okay, so excuse my writing, I struggle with the tablet, but um, yeah, we're going to focus on inverse functions for the next 15 minutes. And all we're focusing on is the exponential ones because the parabola, it's very small. Oh, I don't know why I'm writing so badly. It's because Okay, so let's talk about an exponential function first. Now, some of you might be seeing the word exponential and not even picturing the correct graph. So your exponential function, the general formula for an exponential function, is actually a couple, but the main one looks like this. If you were in grade 10, we would have given it to you like that, plus Q. If you were in grade 11, we would have given it either like this or like this, actually, a times b to the power of x plus q. Um, and then if you were in grade 11, we would have introduced you to a horizontal shift. So it looks like this, a to the power of x plus p or minus p um, plus q. So let's talk about these things first. This q, no matter which formula they give you, the q stands for the y asymptote, the horizontal asymptote. So for instance, this is just a random little example here. Okay, let's say that this Q over here was two, positive two. It means that you would have an asymptote here going through the Y axis at two. Okay, this A over here doesn't really stand for much. It talks about more about what the shape of the graph would look like. But let's say this is the example. Um, so let's say the example is Y equals two to the power of x, and then I'm going to do another one, y equals two to the power of x plus two, okay? So this one over here, okay, this asymptote is zero, so it lies on the axis over there, 
okay? And this 2 would mean that it's an increasing function. But to be honest with you, this 2, because sometimes they look like this, negative 2 to the power of x, or they give you a half to the power of x, which is the same as 2 to the power of negative x. There's all different ways that this graph could look. But if I were you, what I would do is, to draw the function, okay, I would always find the y-intercept first. So let's do this slowly, actually. I feel like I'm rushing. I always feel like this is the beginning of a lesson. So just bear with me while I get my groove. <laughs> okay. So this example here, I'm going to do in purple. Then I'm going to do the green example next over there. Okay. So the asymptote is zero because there was nothing written here. Right. So it's on that axis, which means the graph can't touch that line. All right. Then to draw the graph, always start off by finding the y-intercept. And how do we find the y-intercept of any function? We make the x value zero. So this would be y equals 2 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So now we, now we know that the y-intercept here is 1. But now we need to know how to draw the graph. Is the graph, does the graph look like that? Does the graph look like that? Does the graph look like, definitely can't look like that because that's crossing the asymptote. So we have two options. We don't know, does the graph look like that? Is it an increasing function or is it a decreasing function? All right. If you know your theory, you can see, because this is positive, that it's an increase in function. So I actually know that it looks like that. But let's say, I don't know, you're studying for hours and hours. You can't even remember what the graph looks like. There's a very simple solution. We know what the y-intercept is. Now you need to find another point. So you can use your calculator, or if you don't have, well, you should have a calculator. But what you can do is, to find another point, put an input value of 1 in, an x value of 1. So what does that mean? Okay, I'm taking the 1 and I put it in place of x. So look at what I'm going to do. y equals 2 to the power. That was an x. Now I'm going to put a 1. And I get a 2. So now what I've done is I've generated coordinates for myself, 1 and 2. So the x coordinate was 1. The y coordinate was 2. So it looks like that. And then you draw a nice curve line. Oh, that looks like that. It's an increasing function. Okay, and you make sure that it doesn't cross that asymptote over there. Now, let's look at the green one at the top here, okay? So let's say that this equation is y equals 2 to the power of x plus 2. That plus 2 is the asymptote over there, the positive 2, okay? Now you need to find, once again, a y-intercept. So how do you find the y-intercept of any function? You make x equal 0. So we're going to say y equals 2 to the power of 0 plus 2. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So the y-intercept here is 3. Okay? Now, like I said, you want to find another point on the function. So to find another point, sub in an x value of 1. And you can choose any x value. I always choose 1, always. So now we're going to find another point. Okay? And I'm going to make the x value 1. Okay? So here's my equation. y equals 2 to the power of 1 plus 2, which gives me 4. So my coordinates are 1 and 4. There's the 1 always about here somewhere. So the coordinates are 1 and 4. And now we can see that it's an increasing function like that. Okay. And it never, ever crosses the asymptote. So yeah, sorry, this doesn't look so neat. I'll make it a bit better. Here's your one example. Okay. And then your other example is this one here. I'm just going to write your example. Those of you making notes for yourself. But this is still grade 11 work, if not grade 10 work even. Okay, we haven't even spoken about inverse functions. So now, uh, let me just get something here. All right, if I give you something like this, <clears throat> um, let's say y equals a half to the power of x. My first question is, and I know you guys can't answer because your mics are muted, but my first question is, what is another way to write this? I did actually show you earlier. What's another way to write this? How else can I write this equation? I think you can actually type it into the chat, maybe. What is another way to write a half to the power of x in exponential form? Don't, don't say 0.5x. That's correct, but that's not what I'm looking for. What's another way to write this? Yeah, maybe you're putting up your hands and on to tell your teachers. But another way to write this is 2 to the power of negative x. So I just want you to have, be mindful of this is that this is exactly the same. Not the same, the same. Okay, so if it's got an exponent there, remember another way to write a half is to bring that denominator up and give it a negative exponent. Okay, and that's where that two to the power of negative. So now if I ask you to draw this one, let's talk about this. Let's just call this an example as well. 
All right, so your line is there. Yeah, let's give this one a different asymptote. So let's say this asymptote is negative three, which is the same there. So start off with your asymptote. Just sort of estimate, draw a dotted line, write the equation of the asymptote, y equals negative three. Now remember what I said, once you have the asymptotes, now you want to find the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept of any function, you make x equals zero. So it doesn't matter which equation you use, but we're going to say a half to the power of zero minus three. Anything to the power of zero is one, and one minus three is minus two. So this y-intercept is minus two, like that. Okay, then we want to find another point. Okay, and I remember what I said, to find another point. Ugh, spelling, yeah. Okay, you can choose any x value, but I'm going to choose x equals 1. Well, I always choose x equals 1. So we're going to say y equals a half to the power of 1 minus 3. So what is a half minus 3? Negative 2.5 or negative 2.5. Okay, now this is interesting because now it's saying that the x value is 1 and the y value is negative 2.5. OK, so the x value is 1, and negative 2.5 is lower, so it's down there somewhere. x value is 1, y value is negative 2.5. So if you connect these dots, you will see that this is a decreasing function. Like that. OK, so when there's a negative over here, that little guy over there, okay, when there's a negative or it's a fraction, it means that it is a decreasing function, so it's going down. But you're not going to get all your marks just for this. I need to, if it goes through the x-axis, which in this question it does, but if you look at these two questions, you can see it's not even going through the x-axis. This one isn't going through the x-axis either, so we didn't run into this problem. But this question is going through the x-axis, and we want to give you a mark for that. So, oh, this isn't actually going to work out the way I wanted it to, but it's fine. Okay, so to find the x-intercept of a graph, so this is how we find the y-intercept. We make x equal naught. That was just some working out. How do I find the x-intercept of any function? You make y equals zero. Okay, so here's your equation. Zero equals a half the power of x minus three. Okay, here we have an exponential equation, exponential function. So this negative three, I'm going to do the inverse operation over there. OK, and I usually at this point, what we would, uh, it's plus three, sorry. Usually at this point, we would try and make the bases the same. But in this example, there's no way to make the bases the same. OK, but we can use something called logs, which I'm sure you've been exposed to. We did with financial maths and with functions. OK, so if you want to make X the subject, you want to solve for X, grab your calculators quickly. OK, this little half, oh, I don't want to use that. That and that, okay, just be aware of this. This little half goes to the bottom. No edge. Sorry, I'm just quickly checking something here. X log half, that means the same thing, yeah. Okay, so that half over there, the X comes down, you make it the subject, and that little half you put there. So now your calculator has two log buttons. I'm just going to bring my calculator up quickly. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So... Okay, I don't even remember how to bring my calculator up. Okay, but on your calculator, there are two log buttons. So you're going to use the one with two little blocks. Okay, I'm not going to be able to show you on my calculator, but it's fine. So on your calculator, you'll see um, there's a button that just says log, like literally just the word log. And then there's a button that's a little bit higher up that says log, and then there's two blocks. So I want you to use the log with the two blocks. Okay, and then in the one block, I want you to put a half. And in the other block, I want you to put the three and then solve for x. We'll just click equals and tell me what you get. It should be a decimal. Uh, three, negative, I got negative 1.58. 
there. So that gives you negative 1.58 over there. And now you've drawn your function perfectly. Now, this is actually perfect because what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about inverse functions where we're going to be using logs. So let me just take you through this one more time. Let me just check my time. Okay. Um, inverse functions, we're talking about exponential functions, which you, it's all the grade 11 work that you do need to know. But drawing a function, you start off with the asymptote and then you put the y intercept and then you get another point. This example here, same thing. Start off with the asymptote, y intercept, another point. This example down here, we started off with asymptote, y intercept, another point. And then we noticed that when you draw the graph, it actually intercepted at the in the x axis. So if that happens, you actually have to work that x intercept out. You can't leave it. These previous two examples didn't intercept the x axis, so we didn't need to. OK, so this one does. And to work out the x intercept, you make the y value zero. So we ended up with this. We made x the subject and we use logs. OK, now we're going to go a little bit more in depth with logs quickly, and then I'm going to give you a question to try on your own. So <clears throat> I'll leave that up for a bit longer. Let's call this example four. Yeah, here's your function. f of x, very simple one, equals 3 to the power of x. Now, how do you recognize it's an exponential function? Because the exponent is x. When the exponent is x, we know that it's an exponential function. Okay. In this question, I know that it's going to be an increasing one. So, once again, I ask you to draw this one. Very simple one, though. Okay. Whenever you're drawing an exponential function, you always start off with the asymptote. So this is the y-axis, that's the x-axis. The asymptote is on that line over there. Okay, so you don't have to draw it because it's just you're not going to be able to see it. After you've got the asymptote, you need the y-intercept. All right, to find the y-intercept, we make x equals 0. And you can see here, if you put a 0 here, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So once again, we have a 1. Okay, once we've got the y-intercept, we need to find another point. To find another point, I always use an x value of 1. Okay, so now think about this. If you put a 1 in here, what is 3 to the power of 1? 3. So you put 1 in and you got 3 out. So that's your coordinates. You put 1 in, the x value is 1, and the y value is 3, and they meet up over there. 1 and 3. So now I know that my function looks something like this. Okay, increasing function, pretend that that's covering that dots and not crossing that axis. Okay, all good and well. If I now ask you for the range of this function, okay, the range and domain, right? The range of this function, you can see the graph exists above zero. So all of these, if I had to ask you, for instance, what's the, co the y coordinate there, you would tell me three. If I asked you what's the y coordinate there, you would tell me one. If I asked you what's the y coordinate here, you don't know what it is, but it, there is something at least. So there's a whole bunch of y coordinates. If I had to ask you what's the y coordinates at this point, the graph doesn't exist there. The graph only exists up here. Okay, so when it asks for range, I'm asking you what are all the possible y coordinates? So you can see it goes all the way down and all the way up there, but it doesn't go down here. So the y coordinates are all of these, but how do we even write that? Okay, this asymptote, the equation of that asymptote is y equals zero. So this range is everything above zero. Those of you that use that. Other notation, another way to write it is to say y is everything round brackets above zero all the way to infinity round brackets. Those two things mean the same. It all depends on what you prefer to use, set bold or interval notation. Okay, now if I ask you for the domain of the function, I'm basically asking how far left and how far right is the graph going. I'm actually, I'm actually asking you what are all the x-coordinates of the function. So if I had to choose this point, you can see the x-coordinate is 1. If I choose a point here, the x-coordinate is 0 because it's 0 and 1 over there. If I choose a point down here, there's an x, there's basically a whole bunch of x-coordinates going all the way down there. And this graph obviously continues going to the right. And there's no end. So basically for this one, all you need to say is that the range, I'm sorry, the domain is an element of all real numbers. It's everything. Okay, so now they say this. Determine the equation of f to the negative 1. When you see this negative 1, okay, so grade 11 is not on the call. This is new work. You haven't been exposed to this. 
when they see when they say determine the equation of f to the negative one, that negative one means determine the equation of the inverse function. Okay, negative one, not a dash. They're not asking you for the derivative function. They're asking for the inverse function. So nothing to do with calculus. So inverse function, that negative one. Another way to say inverse function is to say reflection over y equals x. Y equals x is a line here. It's a straight, oops, it's a straight line graph. Y equals x. Yeah. Oops, but it should go through the origin. Okay, that's the equation of the line y equals x. Now, if I had to give you just a normal question, okay, and I say to you that this value here is, I don't know, 1 and 4, and then I say reflect that over the line y equals x, what will happen, very easy, is the coordinates just swap around. So now it would be 4 and 1, somewhere down here. Okay, so whenever you're reflecting about the line y equals x, the coordinates swap. Everything swaps. All the x's become y's, all the y's become x's. So remember that. Whenever they say anything about inverse function or you see that little negative one, all they ask you to do is reflect it over the line y equals x. Now that's like easy to say, but like the, the theory of it, I guess, but like the practical part of it, the actual drawing of it, like how do I even start this? So maybe before I say determine the equation, let that be question two. Let's say question one is sketch the inverse. So sketch the inverse function, okay? Now remember what I said, look at the A, the one and the four become four and one, everything swaps. So if you look at these coordinates here, we'll do it in green. No, we won't. What color should we do? Do it in a different color, we'll do it in light blue. So if everything swaps, this x, sorry, this y intercept now becomes the x intercept at one. Okay. Three and one, sorry, one and three, they swap around. Now they become three and one. So three and one, let's say, is about there somewhere. Okay. Another thing you need to swap is the asymptote. At the moment, the asymptote is y equals zero. Now the asymptote will be this one x equals zero, okay? And your graph looks like this. That's your inverse function, okay? It's very difficult to draw. <laughs> Remember, it mustn't cross this line. But just a little tip, what I tell mama tricks, is that if your original function is an, is an increasing function, like this one, from left to right, the graph is going up, okay? Your inverse is also increasing. Can you see from left to right, the graph is going up? So just take that in for a few seconds, because you're going to be practicing this now. So the original graph, you need to know how to draw. You need to know how to draw an exponential function, okay? So you do the asymptote, the y-intercept, and a random point, and make sure if it crosses the x-intercept, then you need x-axis, you need to work that out. And then the inverse function, to draw it, is actually the easiest part of the question. To draw it, all you're going to do is swap everything. The 1 and 3 become 3 and 1. This one was 0 and 1, now become 1 and 0. So the y-intercept becomes the x-intercept. And this asymptote now becomes that asymptote going down there. So it all swaps. So this is a perfect example of an inverse function. Okay, now number two, it says determine the equation of the inverse function. And I, like I said, I mark metric paper one. So let me show you where we always give our first mark. Okay, here's the original graph. f of x equals three to the power of x. That f of x is a placeholder for y. So I'm just going to erase that. Just put a y there. This is the original question. Yeah, this is the f of x part. Now, your first mark, when they say determine the equation, even if you can't do logs, your first mark is just for swapping the x and the y. This is a two-mark question. You've got one mark so far. So in inverse function, you swap the x and the y. But the question says, not the question says, when you're finding the equation of a graph, we don't ever want x as the subject. We want y to be the subject. So yes, you've got your one mark here, but now I need to make y the subject. So look at what we did here with the log. Okay, when I needed to make x the subject, when I needed x to be the subject, where did I put that little half down there? Okay, so same thing here. There's the y. So if I want y to be the subject, that little three goes down. Okay, and this is your equation of your inverse function. That's your second mark. 
All right. Okay, that's all I want to spend any more time on this because I want you to practice now for a little bit. But that's all that I'm going to focus on for inverse functions. Um, you need to know how to draw the original. Um, you need to know how to sketch it. All you do is you swap the X and the Ys, and you need to know how to find the equation. That's the main thing. All right, so take some notes down quickly, and then I'm going to tell you what page I want you to go to. I will project it. I just want to show you first. Okay, those of you that have got everything that you need from this, um, can you please go to page seven in your notes? Okay, if you need me to project this again, maybe just type it in the chat. Otherwise, I'm just going to go on here. So in your notes, yeah, go to page seven quickly. This question over here is this. Okay, page seven. So it's question three, March 2010. And I want to give you a bit of time to do this one. I'm not going to be able to project the whole thing just because of the size. Oh, I can. It's a bit small. Um, and all I would like you to do, you can try 3.3, but I want you just to do 3.2 and 3.1. Okay, if you are ahead, you're welcome to do 3.3. So this is page seven. Question three, and there's four, five marks. I'm going to give you five minutes for this one. Okay, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm just going to turn my camera off. <laughs> Okay, just a reminder about the registers. Um, please make sure that you fill them in. I think they are in the chats. So teachers, please take um, the time now. There's four minutes and fill in those online registers, please.
Okay, let's have a look at this. See how you guys did. I'm just gonna find this question. Oh, we're actually I'm just gonna use the one that's here, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so first one, it says write f to the negative one in the form y equals x. So they're actually asking you for the equation of the function. See here. guys give me one second let's copy and paste this okay it's easier yeah all right so they asked you to find the equation of the inverse function oh this is exactly the example we did what a yeah that's not what i was hoping would happen but it's fine okay i hope that you practiced at least so get your it's a one mark question in this case so they didn't give you two marks but it's fine um so this is the original let's go through this first swap the x and the y value so x becomes like that all right this should be a two mark question um get your first mark and then your second mark you need to make y the subject okay y needs to be on its own so this three always drops that's how i remember it there's the three drops, and then there's the x, and now y is the subject. Okay, you don't have to write the y though. You can say f to the negative one. It means the same thing. All right, but if you said y, that's also perfect. So that's 3.1's answer. So always start off with swapping the x and the y. They usually a watermark there. And then once you've done that, make y the subject. And remember, whatever is with the y, that little three drops down to the log part. And then it says sketch the inverse. When you're sketching, you don't even need the equation. You just need the actual graph. So I can see here, it's drawn to scale on this grid. The y intercept is one. So now the x intercept will be one. All right. Yeah, that's why they actually gave you a grid. The coordinates here are one and three, exactly like the dot example we just did. Now we can use three and one over there. Okay. And this asymptote is y equals zero. That asymptote there, so now it becomes x equals zero. So just make sure your line doesn't cross the asymptotes and connect the dots with a smooth line and make sure that your arrows don't let you cross the asymptotes at all. Okay, that's your first two marks. And then it says this it asks you to draw this graph here. Now, let's just talk about this quickly. So we're on 3.2 now. Okay, we've already sketched f to the negative one. That's done. They are asking you now to sketch f to the negative 1, x minus 2. That minus 2 over there in brackets means the graph has shifted horizontally. If it's in the brackets with the x, literally in the brackets with x, it shifted horizontally. And if it's minus 2, it means that it shifted horizontally two units right. I always think of it in opposites. So if it's a minus in my head, it goes right. If it's a plus in my head, it goes um to the left so if there's a minus there minus two it means it's shifted two units right so all you're going to do is take your little graph okay your now inverse function that's reflected over the line y equals x so here's the y equals x line that's actually what's happened that's what an inverse function is and now you shift it two units to the right so that will shift two units to the right okay um the asymptote will shift two units to the right so that is zero it shifts two units to the right so the asymptote will be here somewhere. Okay. Um, there's the new asymptote at x equals two. We have a point here. If it's one there, now it's moved two units up. It's now intercepting at three. So now your graph looks something like that. Every point has moved two units to the right. So this three and one has now become five and one. Yeah, and it's going through there. That's what that means if it says in the brackets negative two. All right. If they wanted you to shift it up or down, they would say something like this. There's the x, and then I could say, for instance, plus one. That means that there's been a vertical shift. Okay, one unit up. Okay, so if it's in brackets, it means that it's shifting left and right. If it's out of the brackets, it means it's moving up and down. Okay. Um number two. I want to go through, but I don't think there's time. Um, I need to move on to, I need your teachers to go through this stuff with you. But I'm going to move on to um, parabolas now, because that's your next bulk of the work. So let's go through this quickly, and then you're going to practice a couple. Um, all right, parabolas, huge section. You would have spent most of your time in grade 11 on parabolas when you guys did functions. 
Um, so we're going to try and do this very quickly. But they are for parabola. They are three formulae. Okay, just so you remember, parabola is the happy or sad one here. Yeah? That's your parabolas. Um, okay, so the first one is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we expect you to know all three of these. Okay, your next one is y equals a x minus x1 x minus x2. And your third one is y equals a x minus p squared plus q. Okay, let me just see if I can divide this up a little bit. Okay, so when they ask you, we're going to ask you to draw the graph and we're going to ask you to find the equation of the graph. Okay, for all three of these, they give you different information. So this C over here is the Y intercept. Okay, these X's, that X there and that X there, those are your X intercepts. Okay, and that P and that Q is your turning point. Okay, so if I had to give you an example like this, y equals um, x squared plus 3x plus 2, and I ask you to sketch this one, if you see a positive 2 there, if you see it in this form, that 2, they've given you the y-intercept. Okay. So whenever you're drawing a function, sorry, whenever you're drawing a parabola, another name for parabola is a quadratic function. Whenever you're drawing a parabola, we expect three things of you. We expect you to plot the y-intercept. Maybe write this down. We expect you to plot the y-intercepts. We expect you to plot the x-intercepts. And we expect you to plot the turning points. X-intercept, there might be one, two, or none, actually. So whenever, just like these three that I've got in front of you, um, I... I need to see these on your sketch. Even if I don't give it to you, you need to work it out. We give you marks for the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, and the turning points. So this example, I've given you the y-intercept of two. So you can actually plot the y-intercept of two. Okay? But I still need the x-intercepts and the turning points to be able to get the marks. I need these things on my sketch. All right, to be able to draw the function. So if the y-intercept is done, great. Now you need to move on to figuring out the x-intercepts. How do you find the x-intercept of any function? You make y equals zero. So here's the y. So I'm going to say zero equals x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to solve for x. It's a quadratic equation. So if you were here on Monday, on Monday, Tuesday, you know how to solve a quadratic equation. Must be in standard form. Must be equal to zero. Must be in descending powers of x. You can factorize or you can use your quadratic formula. All right. This one I'm definitely going to factorize though. So two sets of brackets, plus and plus, x and x. Factors of two to give me three are two and one. And then you're going to solve each bracket. x plus two equals zero x equals negative 2, that's your 1 x-intercept, x plus 1 equals 0, and x equals negative 1. Another way to say x-intercepts, just for a bit of theory, is to say roots. Just get used to that word. All right, so the roots of this formula are negative 2 and negative 1. So here's your negative 1, and there's your negative 2. Okay, so so far we've plotted the y-intercept. We've plotted the x-intercept. I still need to plot the turning point of the function, okay? There are many, many ways to work out the turning points, three specifically. Okay, I'm trying to decide which way to do with you guys. Um, okay, so that is your x-intercept. Okay, your y-intercept is already there, and now we need the turning points. Okay, the turning point is, yeah, because I can see it's going to be something like this. All right, basically, I want those coordinates. Okay, so what you can do, what I teach my grade 10s and my grade 11s, is the turning point, once you have the x-intercepts, the turning point is actually always smack bang in the middle over here. Okay, so it's exactly between these two values for parabola, not for a cubic function that you do for calculus, but it does work for parabola. So if you want it to be lazy, okay, or just use symmetry, the x value here is negative 1.5. It's halfway between the two x-intercepts. 
Okay, so you can just use symmetry. And then once you have the x value, you can sub it into the formula, into the original formula to work out the y value. So turning point, you need an x value and a y value because it's coordinates. So we know that that's negative 1.5, but now I need this. Yeah, so I take the negative 1.5 and we put it into the formula. In brackets, please be careful because of that negative. Whenever you substitute, you should use brackets. Okay, you type it into your calculator. Negative 1.5 squared plus 3 times negative 1.5 plus 2. I get a solution of negative a quarter or negative 0 0.25. And that's my answer. Okay. That's the one way to work out a turning point. If you have the two x-intercepts, you can just use symmetry for parabola and go in the middle. Another way is to use de derivative, and another way is to use the minus b over 2a method. So um, let me just do that quickly. If I want to work out the turning point, another way I can say minus b over 2a. So the b value is 3, minus 3, 2a, which gives you the same answer. Okay. Or, like I said, you can use the derivative of the function. So you can say um, dy over dx equals 2x plus 3. Yeah, there's infinite ways. Not infinite. There's three ways. Okay. There's no point going into all of that, though. Just based on grade 11, you can use symmetry, like I said, or you can just use the minus b over 2a method. Okay. Let's quickly look at this one, just so you understand the three formulae, and then I'm going to give you some work to do. Okay. This question over here, if I say to you y equals... Let's say negative x plus 3 and x minus 1, something like that. Okay, this is a parabola. Now, grade 11s struggle and grade 12 struggle to see that that's a parabola because they're so used to seeing a square the whole time. But think about it. If it has, if you had to times it out, x times x gives you x squared. All right. So now let's talk about this. You need to draw it. When you're drawing a parabola, I need the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, the turning points. OK, so I've got the turning, the x-intercepts already, but I still need the y-intercept and the turning point. So let's write this down. OK, if you had to sketch this, the turning points are given to you. Remember to use the opposite sign. So plus 3 becomes negative 3. And negative 1 becomes positive 1. OK, that's the x-intercepts. I still need y-intercept and turning points to complete my graph. So how do I find the y-intercept of any function? You make x equals 0. So there's my equation. I'm going to say y equals negative 0 plus 3, 0 minus 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and that gives me 3. So my y-intercept is positive 3 up here somewhere. Yeah. And just remember this as well, that A and that A and that A over there all mean exactly the same thing. It's telling you the graph is a concave up or concave down, a happy or sad function. So I see the negative there, negative 1, which is the A value. So I know that this graph is going to be a sad graph, a concave down graph. Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's work out the turning points. So like I said, you can use symmetry if you want. So all you need to do is add these two numbers together. So if you say minus 3 plus 1, you get minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. It's always halfway between the two. Or you can use minus b over 2a. But then you have to times out these brackets, yeah, which is just painful. So to use symmetry, you can just, like I said, add the two numbers and then divide the two numbers by 2. That becomes minus 2 divided by 2, which is minus 1. So I know that the graph is going to look something like this because I know it's a sad function. Look. I hope you can draw this better than I can. Okay, so I know that the x value is negative 1. And then how do I find the y value of the turning point? What do I do with this negative 1? You sub into the original function. Sorry about the noise in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it. People outside. Sorry, I'm just going to get... Let's fix that now, that noise. So we have minus 1 plus 3, minus 1 minus 1 is 4. Oh, that's quite nice. Okay, so turning point is negative 1 and 4. All right. Okay, last one, guys. And then you're on your own for a little bit. Let's see. Let's that away. 
So this one, random example, let's say y equals, um, let's say 2x minus 1 squared plus 4, whatever. Okay, so this one, the turning point is given. So when you sketch this one, all of these are parabolas, we can ask you in any way. When you sketch this one, the one and the four are given. So x is one, it's always the opposite sign when it's in brackets, remember that, just like these ones. I'm gonna move this to the other side, use it. Just don't know how to move it. Yeah, okay. So remember what I said? If it's negative one, it's actually positive one. Same thing here, that negative three and negative one is actually three and one. Oh, sorry, that positive three becomes negative three. That negative one becomes positive one. So this turning point, you see the little square, that's telling you that it's a parabola. That little square is telling you it's a parabola. So we have one and four, one and four. The turning point is that, one and four. But now I still need the y-intercept. I still need the x-intercept to complete my graph. So to find the x-intercept of a graph, I make y equals zero. So to find the x-intercepts, you always make y equal zero. So when it says zero equals two x minus one squared plus four, oh, this isn't going to work. Yeah, I need to change this two to a negative. It needs to be a sad function to work. Sorry about that. Okay, so that should be a little negative over there. Okay, so we times out. If you can't times out, if you can't square binomial, remember to write the bracket out twice and times out carefully. Okay, if you can, that's fine. X squared minus X minus X plus one plus four. And then times into the brackets. Yeah, and then we times out. Minus two X squared plus four X plus five, and then to find the x-intercepts at this point, I would just use the quadratic formula, okay? So we would say x equals minus b plus minus b squared minus four a c over two a, and then type it in twice, once with a plus, once with a minus, show your substitution so that you can keep track, three, I don't have my, my learners in front of me today, so I'm struggling a little bit with pace to see how you guys are doing. But if there is a problem, just message on the chat. Say, slow down or you need to see that slide again or something like that. Okay, so these two roots are 2.87. Let's say about there, 2.87. Uh, I think it was negative 0 0.87. Negative 0.87. Okay, so I have got my turning point done. I've got my x-intercept done. I still need the y-intercept. How do you find the y-intercept of any function? You make x equals zero. Okay. And you can actually stick to the original function. So to find the y-intercept, okay, you make x equals zero. All right, so here's the equation. So you're going to say y equals minus 2, 0 minus 1 squared plus 4. That becomes 1 minus 2 plus 4 is just 2. Y-intercept is 2. So x, y, it's about there somewhere. Okay, and there's your little parabola. Oh, skew, but it should be going through those points. Yeah, pretend. Pretend. That works. Okay. So make sure you have this. Whenever you're drawing a parabola, you need three things, y-intercepts, x-intercept, turning points. You need to just make sure of the formula they give you. Each of these formulae give you one of those things, but you have to work out the other two things. So if they give you the y-intercept, they give you the c-value, you have to work out the x-value and the turning points, x-values. Okay, so make sure you understand all three of those. We can ask you any of those. We can ask you parabola questions based on that. Okay. Make some notes, whatever you need, and I want you to get your notebook out quickly. And I want you to look at the first question. I think it's on page six. I will project it in a minute. Yeah, on page six, question two.
yeah, this one over here, page six, question two. You can see the little parabola. Um, there you be a parabola and a straight line function. All right. And these are the questions I would like you to do. Um, you don't have to worry about maximum length. You can do it if you want to. Um, but what I would like you to do is 2.1 and 2.2. Yeah, that's actually it. Eight marks for that one. So eight minutes. We need to obviously use our time effectively. So 2.1 and 2.2. Like I said, if you're working fast, go ahead. You're going to get the memo anyway. Those of you that are understanding. Okay, so eight minutes. Go for it. 2.1, 2.2 on page six. Okay, just another reminder for teachers to fill in the online register, please. Online register, it is in the chat. It was reposted in the chat, apparently. Bianca, there's been a request that you please scroll up a little bit so that they can see the graph and the questions. Okay, I'll make it a bit smaller. Sorry, I thought they had it with them. Let me just make it a bit smaller so they can see the whole page. Okay, yeah, so only up to 2.2. .2. Those of you that have the notes in front of you, obviously you can go a bit further. You see it gets a bit too small now. Okay, try like that. I'm just going to try and open it up onto my note because then you might be able to see it a bit differently. That one. Yeah, this is, I think, a bit easier. No. Stick to this.
um, just teachers, so you're aware, at the, and learners that are on the call, at the end of the lesson, um, I mentioned I'm not obviously going to post the memo, but what I am going to do is I'm going to post the memo and I'm going to post these notes again so you don't have to hunt for them in your emails, um, just so your learners can get a copy of it when you're back at school. And I'm also going to post a little PowerPoint that Elaine sent me on inverse functions. So please don't leave until all of those, until you've got those three documents from the chat. Okay, um, let's go through this. Okay, so just one more time. Repetition is good. <laughs> okay, just so you can all be on the same page. Um, remember what I said with functions, sorry, with parabolas. Another name for parabola is a quadratic function. Quadratic, we spoke about on Tuesday. Remember that little square? Always look for the square. When you see a square, we're thinking parabola. When you see an X as the exponent, okay, that's not a parabola. It's got an exponent, but it's not a parabola. That little X means it's an exponential function. Um, yeah, so parabolas, we're looking for that square the whole time. There are three formula that you need to know. You need to know all three. Please don't think that you don't need to know them. You have to know all three, okay? All three give you something different, but you need information from, you need the same thing three bits of information. So the first one gives you the y-intercept, then the x-intercepts, then the turning point. If they give you the turning point, awesome. You still need to find the two x-intercepts and the y-intercept if they are. Um, there's always a y-intercept. Um, if they give you the y-intercept, so on, so on. So remember, you have to have three things on your sketch. Now, the work that I gave you, <clears throat> you didn't have to do anything like that, but you did need the information. So if you look at this question, all right, this formula over here, 
care is this formula that we spoke about, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? They have given you the y-intercept, and they've actually called it c, funny enough, okay? They've given you that value there. So I know before I even get to the questions, before I even go down here to these questions, I know that this y-intercept is 0 and 8, okay? This A value tells me if it's a concave up or concave down graph. I can see that it's negative, and I can obviously see the graph as although it's a concave down. And then they've given you a straight line that we're going to talk about a bit. So the first question says, determine the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B, all right? You know that those are x-intercepts. And how do we find the x-intercepts of any function? We make the y value 0, okay? So we're going to take the little equation that we did over here. All right, and we're going to say 0 equals negative x squared, what was it, plus 7x plus 8. Okay, and now at this point, you can use your quadratic formula if you like, or you can factorize it. But I'm just thinking about, there was someone that asked a question the other day, on Tuesday. If you want to factorize, which you obviously totally can, okay, if you want to factorize, this negative needs to be a positive. Okay, that doesn't mean you can just make it a positive. That's not how maths works. Maths needs to balance. You need to either, because it's an equation, you can take the negative out as a common factor, or you can um, do all the inverse operations on the other side. So instead of it being negative x squared here, you can make this positive x squared. That positive 7x can be negative 7x, and then that positive 8 can be negative 8, and then you can put the 0 over there. Okay, so if you are factorizing, if you want to factorize, Okay, this A, whatever this number is, it must be positive. If you want to use the quadratic formula, you can do whatever you want. So you can just put the negative one in, in place of A. You don't have to make, it doesn't have to be a positive leading coefficient. Okay, but I thought I'd just go over it because someone did ask. Um, so now you factorize, you would have your two sets of brackets or your quadratic formula. We have a minus, we have a plus, factors of 8 to give me 7 are 8 and 1, not 8 and 7. 8 and 1. Remember, your solutions are always the opposite sign. So you're going to say x equals 8 and x equals negative 1. And now you need to decide which one goes where. So does this a, is that a going to be 8 or is a going to be negative 1? Obviously, a is going to be negative 1 and the y value is 0. Remember, you just subbed in y and 0. And then the b's value is going to be 8. And then you're going to put the 0 over there. Okay, and that's worth four marks, guys. Nice marks. All right, then you had to do 2.2, all right, which I didn't really explain to you, but it's fine. You can use some prior knowledge for that one. Um, and the question says, calculate the value of A, this one over here, the x-intercept of D. Let me just write these values in. Oops. Okay, so this A value was negative 1, and that value there was 8. Now they're asking you for this A over here, okay, which is the x coordinates over there. What do we call this over here? That little point. What is what do we call D? D is a what? Say it to your teachers because you can't unmute your mics. D is a point of intersection. Okay. It's where the straight line graph and the parabola have the same coordinates. Okay. Where the two graph have two graphs have the same x value and the same y value. Okay. So what you can do then, because they're asking you for this one over here, you can take the two graphs. All right. Now we know that they have the same y value, right? So if we equate them, so you can say here minus x squared plus 7x plus 8 equals minus 3x plus 24. This is how we can find the x value of a point of intersection. Just equate the two graphs, okay? Now, if you were here on Tuesday, you should know this little equal sign means it's an equation, right? What type of equation is this if it's got a square? Say to your teachers. Okay, it's probably a bit awkward on your side. Um, okay, so if there's an equal sign, it's an equation. Um, it's got a square, so we know it's a quadratic equation. Because it's a quadratic equation, what are your steps? What's step number one? Standard form. Make it equal to zero. 
I don't want that negative. Okay, so I'm going to leave everything on the side and then I'm going to do the inverse operations on the side. 7x minus 8, put it in standard form, descending powers of x. So that x squared should come first. We have minus 7 minus 3, which is minus 10x. Um, and then 24 minus 8 is 16. Now you're going to factorize or use a quadratic formula. Okay, factors of 16 to give me 10 are 8 and 2. So we have 2, this is weird. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, the x, we have one x value of 8 and one x value of 2. Now, which one is it? Can you see that this little 8, that point over there, isn't that also a point of intersection? Okay, isn't it also where the two graphs are equal to each other? They'll have the same point. So that's why that it, this little equation spats out 8. That makes total sense. Okay, but now they're asking me for A. They're asking me for that value there. So it can't be 8 because we know 8 belongs to B. But this 2 definitely belongs here. So the question is solve for A. That's your answer. A is equal to 2. All right, make some notes. Points of intersection where your two functions are equal to each other. This is a four mark question, so it's really nice. Okay, you get your first mark simply for just equating the two functions, that little equal sign. Then your next mark for putting it in standard form, then for factorizing or quadratic formula, and then your solution. Okay, so nice marks. Equating them, standard form. Okay, this is either factorizing or quadratic formula and then for your answer. Okay, and obviously make sure that you write down the answer. You can say that A equals 2 or something like that. Cancel out that 8 because that 8 belongs to B. All right, yeah, let's practice a little bit more. Can you guys go to page 8? I will project it for those that don't have the note in front of them. Page 8, this one over here. Uh, the only problem is... You're not going to be able to see all of this. Okay, so the learners that have their notes in front of them, can you guys do page eight? If you don't, that's fine. I'm going to try and do this to make everyone be able to see it. I can move these questions. Okay. There's a little inverse function there too. That should be g to the negative one. Okay. And then I'm, actually that's all, all I need you to do, these four. Make this a bit smaller so I can put everything on the same. There we go. Okay, it is quite small though. Sorry, yeah, I don't know how to make this better for the learners that don't have their notes. Okay, so everybody, can you guys all do up to question, you can actually do all of these, up to 4.5. So that's 3, 6, 9, 9 plus 4 is 13, so that's 13 minutes. I'm going to give you 15 minutes for this one. Feels like this is very small though. Yeah, it's the best I can do if you don't have your notes. So, like I said, this is page eight, and I only want you to do up to 
Can you hear me? Anybody? Tyreen? <laughs> can you speak and hear you? Okay, perfect. Um, thank you. I was just trying. Okay, cool. Um, all right, hopefully you guys had enough time. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so that I can write in here and do what I need to do. Okay, so this question, they gave you the formula in the turning point form. Okay, remember you have three formula that you need to know. This is the one where they give you y equals a x minus p squared plus q. All three of those formula that we spoke about, all three of those parabola formula, all have one thing in common. They all have this little a. Don't forget it. Okay, the a is in front of them and they all mean exactly the same thing. So this formula, they give it to you like this. Um, they call it f of x and they say it's x minus 4 squared minus 9. Okay, the A is there, all right? But in this case, the A is obviously just positive one. All right, that makes sense because you can see it's a concave upper parabola, it's a half. So yeah, then they say A and B of X intercepts is the turning point, la la la, looks like everything is fine. They do tell you that DE is parallel to the Y axis. So we know that DE is a straight line. First question, it says write down the coordinates of E, the turning point, okay? So, I'm actually going to do this up here, I think. So 4.1, they're asking for the turning point. They gave you the turning point in the turning point formula, there and there. Be careful, though, because if it's in the brackets, remember to do the opposite sign. So the x value is not negative 4, but positive 4. If it's outside of brackets, leave it as it is, negative 9. And then obviously look at your sketch and see if it makes sense. Does it make sense that that has a positive x value? It should. And the negative y value? It should. Well, it does. There's negative 9. So that's easy two marks. All you're doing is just reading off the formula. 4 and negative 9. Okay, 4.2. It says calculate the coordinates of A for, looks like it's three marks. A is an x-intercept. How do we find the x-intercept of any function? We make the y value zero, okay? So this f of x is a placeholder for y. So we're gonna say zero equals one. We don't have to write the one. X minus four squared minus nine, okay? Um, there's actually a few ways. There's another way to do this. So what you could do is take the nine, do the inverse operation of nine, and then square root that. But you need to remember to put a plus minus here if you're going to do that. And then you would have two solutions for the root of nine. But I I would recommend this if you're trying to save time, I guess. But there's mistakes that can happen with that plus minus. So I would do this properly. And just not when I say properly, I just mean times it out rather. So square the binomial, square the first term, square the last term, multiply and double or times it out and do FOIL. Rather play it safe if you're not great at timesing out things. 16 minus nine is seven. And then you can factorize X minus seven and X minus one. So your two solutions are seven opposite sign and one. Now they're asking you for A. Okay, A is obviously closer to the zero. So A's value is going to be one. And they say the coordinates of A. Okay, so A's coordinates are one and zero. Okay, and that's your answer for that one. 4.3, it says M is the reflection of C in the axis of symmetry. Write down the coordinates of M. I love that they asked this question. Okay, let's talk about this sentence here those three words, axis of symmetry. Okay, now I've used the word symmetry already. So for a parabola, where can you draw a line through the parabola so that if you fold it, like you were folding a page, it would be on top of itself. So a parabola, look at it visually, it's this obviously this concave up one. Where can I draw a line or fold, pretend you're folding it, so that when I fold it, it's on top of itself. So all of you will have basically seen this over here or said this, I hope. That line there, okay, is the axis of symmetry. 
Okay, and that will always be the axis of symmetry for parabola. So any parabola you have, let's say it's a concave down parabola. Okay, your axis of symmetry will once again go through the turning point. So whatever the turning point is, okay, will tell you what the axis of symmetry is. So let's say the coordinates here, for instance, are minus one and nine. Right, the axis of symmetry is this line going through here. That line, just have a look up here. This green dotted line. Can you see it cuts the x-axis? All right, so the equation of this line is x equals 4. That's not what the question is asking. This is us just discussing it. So if I ask you here, what is the equation of this axis of symmetry? It's x equals negative 1. So the axis of symmetry is always whatever the x value is of the turning point. So if you had a happy parabola, the axis of symmetry, let's say the turning point is um, 3 and 7. Okay. The axis of symmetry would be x equals 3. The turning point, that's the turning point, 3 and 7. But this is the axis of symmetry. Okay, keep that in mind. But that's not what the question is. The question says m is reflected in the axis of symmetry. Write down the coordinates of m. So basically, c over here is reflected over that line to land up here, which gives me m. So it's almost like it was folded over that line. Now, C's coordinates are what and what? Well, how many marks is this? Two marks. Okay. C is a y-intercept. It's a y-intercept of the parabola. It's also a y-intercept of the straight line. If you look at the formula over here, do they give you the y-intercept? This formula, unfortunately, doesn't. This formula only gives you the turning point. So that nine is the turning point. Don't be... And don't overthink it, okay? The y-intercept isn't given, but how do you find the y-intercept of any function? What do you do? You make the x value zero, right? So let's find the y, let's find out c's coordinates, unless it's given somewhere. So it feels like it's a lot of work with two marks. Below is that straight line? Da, da, da. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so we're going to do 4.3 over here. We've discussed some good things with 4.3, which I'm happy about. Squeeze it in here. Okay, so let's work out C's coordinates. C is the y-intercept. And to find the y-intercept of any function, we make x equals 0. So we're just going to say y equals 0 minus 4 squared minus... Oh, no, wait. We actually have it over here. When we already times it out, look. When we times it out, there it is there. When we put it in standard form. So the y-intercept is 0 and 7. So this... These coordinates here are 0 and 7. So does any, oh, see, my teacher habit is asking a question now. I need to find out m's coordinates, and then you just use logic, you use symmetry. So think about this. How many units is it from 0 all the way to the x value here? The x value here is 4. So we know from here to here is 4. So that means from there to there is also going to be 4. So what is the x value going to be? 0 plus 4 plus 4, the x value there is going to be 8. Okay, but the y value, it's still in a straight line. So the y value is 7. That's why it's only worth two marks. So m's coordinates are 8 and 7. Okay, because it's going over that line of symmetry. All right, 4.4, it says determine the equation of the straight line. All right, we haven't really done this, but it is a bit of grade 9 work. Um, what I'm going to do here. Okay, so 4.4, I'm going to do here. All right, 4.4, determine the equation of the straight line. So our straight line, remember your formula, y equals mx plus c. That's your gradient, that's your y-intercept. We have the y-intercept here of 0 and 7. Okay, so you've got your y equals mx plus 7. All I need to do now is work out the gradients. In order to work out the gradients, I need another point on the line, okay? Because I can't sub in the y-intercept. So another point on this line is this point over here, D, okay? Do I know what D's coordinates are? Well, I know that the y value is zero because it's on the x-axis, so the y value is zero. But what is the x value? How, what is that x value over there? So because they tell you that this is parallel, they are telling you that those lines are dead straight. So it's not like the line is skew, 
okay? Because the line is dead straight, it means that that x value is the same all the way up that line. That x value is also going to be 4. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. I need, I'm busy working out the equation of the straight line. I've got the y intercept. You can see it's over there. The parabola and the straight line share a y intercept of 7. Okay, and then this x intercept I didn't have, but I can just use inspection to figure it out. So I know that the y value is zero and the x value needs to be in line here. Okay, so that's another point that I have. X is four, y is zero. So you could just do, um, uh, what is it? The, the gradient formula, rise over run, seven minus zero, naught minus four, that's probably safest, let's stick to that. The gradient formula, seven minus zero, and zero minus four. So that gradient is seven over negative four, and there's your answer. Y equals seven over negative four X plus seven. Okay, there's a lot happening here. All right, next one, 4.5, I gave this to you one specifically because of this little negative one. Okay, that little negative one is, that means inverse function. Okay, another way to say inverse function is to say reflects over y equals x. Okay, and remember where that line is. But now I gave it to you in a little bit of a different way because now I've given it to you with a straight line, not an exponential, but it's actually easier. So here's the straight line that you have. Y, because they're talking about G, they're referring to this graph, this one over here. So they we've got this Y equals seven over negative four X plus seven. Okay, to do the inverse function, what is your first step? swap the x and the y get your first mark so you're going to say x over there and y over there seven over negative four plus seven but you can't leave it like this you need y to be the subject okay so you just do it like an equation let's get y on its own so we do the inverse operation so plus seven becomes minus seven okay and now a little bit more difficult so I'm going to do it, finish it up here. Okay, now you need to make, like I said, you need to make y the subject. So this is connected to y by multiplication. So the inverse of multiplication is to divide. But remember, you divide each term. So look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this. Uh, how am I going to do it? Let's just do it as a fraction. This divided by seven, negative 7 over 4. And then you do it again with a 7. 7 divided by negative 7 over four, and now you have y as a subject, but obviously we need to simplify this, okay? So this one you can just type into your calculator. Mm -hmm. Seven divided by negative seven over four, uh, the four would come up, the sevens would cancel, so this will be positive four, okay? This one over here, I'm gonna teach you a quick little trick. If you have a, no, I'm not going to, let's teach you properly. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do this working out over here on the side for you. Okay, we're saying x divided by negative 7 over 4. All right, tip and times. So x times, don't worry about the negative, the negative stays there, 4 over 7. And how do we multiply fractions? Numerator by numerator. And then this is over 1, denominator by denominator, and don't forget the negative. Okay, and this is in standard form, and this is worth your three marks. 4x over 7. Just double check this. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so let me take you through that again. So I didn't need to show you this. We've done inverse functions with um, exponentials. If it's an exponential, that's the only time we need to use logs. Try and remember that. But if you're doing an inverse function with a straight line, you can do it. Start off with swapping the x and the y, one mark. Then you need to make y the subject. So do whatever you need to do, inverse operations to get y on its own. Only the exponential function do we need to use logs. You don't need to use logs with this. Okay, remember that. You only use logs with the exponential function. And then I don't think I said you must do 4.6. As far as I remember, no. Okay, ladies and gents, I want you to do another one. But I also want to teach you a bit of hyperbola stuff. Um, 
Okay, I think I'm going to do a bit of hyperbola stuff with you guys first, just for the sake of time. Okay, so your hyperbola, I love hyperbolas, I feel like they're the easiest. Oh, now I've got these long lines here. Let's just do a new one. Okay, your hyperbola, all right, is exactly the same as it was in grade 11. There is nothing new in grade 12 at all for hyperbolas, okay? Your hyperbola is the one with the two branches. Now, remember what I said. You need to know when, because I can't tell you how many learners, um, oh my God, the scraping on our side. I'm just going to go outside in a minute once I give you something to do. Actually, no, I'm going to give you something to do quickly first. A five minute thing. Um, go to question 10. Page 10, sorry, question seven. I will project it. And I'm going to try to sort out this noise. This one over here, this is what I want you to do anywhere. 7.1. Can you please do the whole of 7.1 up to 7.1.4? It's not many marks, three, five, six, seven marks. So seven minutes. You can start now quickly, and then I'm going to come back to hyperbolas. Okay. All right, seven minutes, question 7.1. Then I'm come back to my purple.
Right, let's mark this quickly. So consider the function. You see that little x at the top there. As soon as you see that little x, that means it is an exponential function. Remember, if it's got a 2, it's got a square, then it's a um, parabola. So first question, calculate the y-intercept of the function. To find the y-intercept of the function, you make the x value 0. Easy. Know this stuff because you can, you, you can apply it to all your functions. So you're going to say y equals 3 times 2 to the power of 0 minus 6, 3 times 1 minus 6 is negative 3. So you have your y-intercept so far of negative 3. Okay, next question says work out, so the y-intercept, sorry, is 0 and negative 3. Number 2, it says calculate the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept of the function, we make y equal 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals 3 times 2 to the power of x minus 6. Okay, we're going to solve for x, so the 6 we can do the inverse operation, no logs needed, okay, it's times by 3, so you're going to do the inverse, which is divide by 3, that becomes 2, okay, bases are the same, so you can equate the exponents, so the x-intercept is 1 and 0, okay, next question says, sketch in your answer book, show all uh, asymptotes and intercepts. This negative 6, that constant term, that is the asymptote. Okay, so negative 6 is down here. You draw a dotted line, dotted, dotted, dotted. You label it y equals negative 6. Okay, and now you plot your intercepts. So the y-intercept is negative 3. Your x-intercept is 1. Oops. One, and we know then that it's an increasing function. It's not allowed to ever cross the asymptote. So it looks something like that. And then you don't actually need another point because it actually goes through the x-intercepts, um, x-axis rather. And then it says, uh, for one mark, it says write down the range of the function. So this is question three. Here's question four. Write down the range. Okay. The graph is above negative six. So you're going to say, why is everything greater than negative six? No equal to signs. OK, if you don't want to write it in interval notation, you can say y is an element between negative six and infinity and just make sure that your brackets are round, no square brackets. OK, I was going to do hyperbolas, but I think what I'm going to do quickly is actually show you one more thing on parabolas, and that's determining the equation of a parabola. Um, so let's just go back here quickly. All right, so these ones, remember, these are your three formulae. And when they ask you to draw the graph, then obviously you need the formulas and then you you write, you work out the x-intercept, y-intercept, and turning points. But what happens when they give you the function? Okay, so I'm going to work on two basic examples with you just because of time. I mean, remember, we spend weeks on this in grade 11, so there's not two hours is certainly not enough time, but we could just do our best, don't we? So let's say this is your parabola. Okay. Let's say it's something like that. And I give you a turning point of, let's say, um, an x value of 2 and let's say a y value of 10. OK. All right. And then we'll say, oh, this is actually good enough. 2, so that's 4. OK. Here's your sketch. You don't even need that, actually. Um, and then I say determine the equation. So this is all I give you. And now you need to figure out the formula of the parabola. But remember, there's three formula. So which one do we choose? Okay. You choose the one with the information that's on your sketch. So look at your sketch. All I've given you is a turning point and one random x-intercept, not even the other x-intercept. So if I've given you the turning point, you need to write down the turning point formula. Don't forget the A. So whenever you're trying to find the equation of a parabola, you need to look at what's given to you. If turning point is given, turning point formula, okay? And now you fill in the numbers. So now I know that 2 and 10 is 2 and 10 over there. But remember, it's always the opposite sign. So if it's positive 2, okay, remember that in here must be negative 2. Don't forget that. Okay? And then the 10 stays as it is. Is my formula done? No, it's not. I still need to find the value of A. That A will be in every single question. OK, 
Okay. To find the value of A, you do one more step. So the first step is easy. You just sub in whatever you saw. The second step is you need to think about. Now you need to sub in another point on the function. Another point. Not the one you just use. A different point. And the only other point I have on this function, as it is, is 0 and 0. This little y-intercept. Okay. So in place of x and y, I'm going to put 0. Okay. I'm going to simplify. 2 squared is 4 plus 10 inverse operations. Then I'm going to say minus 10 divided by 4. So A's value is negative 5 over 2. Does it make sense that A is negative? Is it a concave down graph? It is. How many put time? Okay. So because it's negative, that's fine. So here's my formula then. Therefore, my formula is Y equals A. The turning point x minus 2 squared plus 10 and that's your answer but the problem is they don't want it to look like this they want it to look like this formula on this side so how do i get the formula on this side to look like that formula what do i need to do to this formula to get it to look like this formula over here how do i get those to look like that because I need, it to, I need it to look like this, because the question will ask me to, but I need my working out means that it looks like this. Very easy. All you do is times out your brackets. Okay? So you're going to leave the minus 5 over 2. You're going to times out the brackets, square the binomial. Times into the brackets. Oh, wait, I've made a mistake. No, I haven't. So now it looks like this. There's my mistake. And those two cancel each other out. So that's my parabola. Can you see the little square there? And it makes sense because the y-intercept we knew was zero. You can see here the y-intercept is zero. Okay? So that's the one way we can ask it. Another thing we can do is we can give you the roots, the x-intercepts. Remember what I said? So let's say the parabola, let's say it's a happy one, although it doesn't really matter what it is, okay? And let's say I give you the y-intercept. Let's say the y-intercept is negative 4, and we'll say the roots are 1 and negative 5, okay? So this question, I've given you the y-intercept, but I've also given you the x-intercepts. So if the y-intercept is given, guys, try and stay away from this formula because you're still going to have an A and a B missing. If they give you the roots, the x-intercepts, use your x-intercept formula. y equals a, x minus x1, x minus x2. So to find the equation, you need to look at what's given. Remember, every formula always has an a. Okay? Put the roots in. Opposite sign. So minus 5 becomes plus 5. Positive 1 becomes minus 1. All right, you're not done. You still need to find A. So you sub in a point, a different point, exactly like we did here. So this is we subbed in here 0 and 0. This question, I'm going to sub in 0 and minus 4. Okay, I'm going to simplify. Okay, and then I'm going to solve for A. Minus 4 divided by minus 5 just becomes 4 over 5. And that makes sense because you can see A is a happy graph. It's concave up. So now your formula looks like this. Y equals A, 4 over 5, X plus 5, X minus 1. One minute. We can do it. Okay. X minus 1. How do I get this formula over here to look like that formula over there? What do I need to do to it? Just times out. Okay. So this is your working out. And then to get to your final step, to get the formula looking like that formula, you just times out. Okay, so we have x squared minus x plus 5x minus 5. 4 over 5x squared. Let's just simplify this. This becomes 4x, those together. This becomes positive 4x. So that's become positive 16 over 5x. And those five cancel, so that's just minus four. So that's what your final answer would look like. Okay, we are done.